Well, thank you, John, for the uh, nice introduction. Welcome, everybody. It's really a pleasure to be here. Um, and it's an honor for me to represent the Robert and Arlene Kogod Center on Aging, which is really a unique institution uh, in the country, which is dedicated to understanding the very fundamental mechanisms of aging, as well as helping those who are already older who are suffering um, the consequences of late night life illnesses and disease. And um, the concepts I'm going to talk to you about in the title of my talk have long been viewed as science fiction. Can we really defy aging? Is there a fountain of youth? This has really turned into a topic of sarcasm. If you look in the back of your airline magazine, there will be an ad that promises great things. If you look at the back of flyers and supermarkets, you can order something online that promises these miraculous outcomes. But over the past several months, our institution has been involved in truly groundbreaking and radical research that has made the concept of extending health span, the number of active and productive years that we have, and potentially even extending lifespan, almost a reality. And if not yet a reality, it at least provides hope that we can truly transform health and wellness for older persons in the very near future. So why is there such a buzz now about aging? All of a sudden, if you look at the headlines of the New York Times or The Economist, or if you suffer through the convention talks for the, 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 the next election, aging is a hot topic. I think it's sexy in a way, purely because of the numbers. Between 1946 and 1964, 75 million people were born in the United States. It's really easy math. So in 2011, the first wave of these individuals started to turn the age of 65. And by 2030, 20%, greater than 20% of the US population will be over the age of 65. That's 10,000 people per day turning the age of 65 from here forward. And why do we care about aging? Well, at Mayo Clinic, we care about aging because the needs of the patient come first. And we think about aging, and when many of us were trained in science and medicine, aging was known to be the primary risk factor for the overwhelming majority of chronic diseases, but we just kind of forgot about it because we can't do anything about it. So let's focus on smoking for heart disease, because if you smoke, you have a 70% increase in suffering heart disease. If you have high blood pressure or hypertension, a 75% increase in suffering this disease. If you have diabetes, 47%. But we've kind of just neglected the fact that if you merely get old enough, if you turn the age of 65, your odds of getting heart disease increase by 72-fold compared to those who are under the age of 45. It's dramatic. And this isn't just funny math with, that has to do with heart disease, but we think of other conditions and look at Alzheimer's disease, a truly debilitating disease in later life. If you're female, you're at higher risk. If you get low levels of physical activity, you're at higher risk. If you're unfortunate enough to carry two copies of the APOE4 gene, you're at a five-fold greater risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. But if you just get older, your increase in risk is 45 times. Cancer is no different. The majority of individuals with cancer are older. Yep, it, the risk is higher if you smoke, if you drink too much, and if you eat too much. But if you get older, it increases 52-fold. So, you know, this hasn't been much of a pep talk so far. <laughs> I'm sorry. But we've made incredible progress, and you'll hear about incredible progress from my colleagues here on stage about things that we've done with these individual disease processes. We've done great things for cardiovascular disease, diabetes, neurodegenerative diseases. But as we get older, the likelihood is that most of you will have two or more chronic diseases. 60% of you will be unable to climb a flight of stairs, walk a quarter mile without taking a rest, or lift a 10-pound object. You'll have frailty, disability, and these leads that lead to institutionalization and even death. So when we talk about transform and innovation, what is aging? That is the key question. Would it be possible if we understood aging, we could have a profound impact on all these diseases at once? That's really the question that we think about all the time in the Robert and Arlene Kogod Center on Aging, of what is this process? Why do we get older? What a simple question, but how poorly it's understood. Well, a number of investigators at Mayo Clinic and some of our collaborators elsewhere have been thinking long and hard about this concept of cellular senescence. Not an easy word to say, but it's a process in which our cells undergo irreplicative arrest. It means they can't divide anymore. And those cells become bad actors, in a way, because they not only affect themselves and don't function properly, 
but they actually impact the neighboring cells as well. So the best analogy I have for this process and this concept is the rotten apple spoils the cart. So once the cell goes bad, it affects its neighbors by secreting dangerous molecules. And even though senescent cells are relatively few in number, once they occur, they start impacting the health of the cells around it, ultimately leading to tissue dysfunction. So as you can see on the slide here, the young person, it's really hard to find a senescent cell. That's because we have mechanisms to actually get rid of them. But in the older person, these cells accumulate over time. We have less of an ability to clear them. Things like infection, cancer, and obesity increase the prevalence of these cells. And all of a sudden, they start to lead to adverse consequences. And many of my colleagues have done a lot of work well before my time at Mayo Clinic to establish how these cells play a critical role in aging and disease. So things like cataracts, poor posture and hunching of the back, lotokyphosis, thinning of the skin, loss of muscle, which is sarcopenia, the, or poverty of the flesh, loss of fat that's protective, poor mobility and poor endurance, organ failure, cancer. Cellular senescence clearly is playing a key role in many of these processes. And because this has been established in a number of different animal models, we like to use the mouse as our prototypical model, which is actually not a bad model for aging. We've seen that senescent cells, as they increase in abundance, really have damaging effects. So the natural question is, well, what if you got rid of those cells? What would that do? It's easy enough to show that things are associated with aging, but to then show that if you correct that process and it has a profound effect on aging is a much different question and often more complicated. So how many molecular biologists do we have here? That's right. Oh, we do have one. Excuse me. <laughs> so a group of investigators at Mayo Clinic sat around the table, most of them much smarter than me, and came up with this concept that we could actually design a way to remove senescent cells uh, from mice. So they engineered a way, using the tricks of our science, to actually identify the rotten apples in an organ. And in those rotten apples, we drove a gene process and signaling cascade that led to cell death. So we had the ability to selectively remove senescent cells from an animal. And in doing that, we had profound effects. And this is the cover of the journal Nature, the lead article in the journal Nature, that describes clearing these senescent cells delays aging and age-associated disorders. And here's a, a picture of my technician with these super mice. So removing the cells led to increases in strength in these mice, improved their physical activity levels, improved their posture, improved a number of different measures of health. And in the end, we observed that these improvements in health really made a huge difference in the quality of life of the animal. So we saw fewer cataracts, less of a hunchback. We preserved muscle mass. We had improved organ function across the board. We improved their physical function, and we improved their exercise capacity. Really profound effects. So I'll have you read this, but um, a number of news organizations across the world carried this story because truly, until this time, we had a poor understanding of what causes us to age. And by reversing the effects of this aging process, we really had a transformative and very innovative outcome. And the headline here is that cleansing the body of these cells, we hope, could postpone many of the diseases of, diseases of aging. And that's clearly our vision. Um, again, I, I can't take a lot of credit for this work. I was just once sm spoke on a very large wheel. But this discovery was viewed as one of the top 10 breakthroughs of science last year. And here again, the concept it is, is that washed up cells loitering in our tissues help make us old. This year, we provided solid evidence that these cells promote aging and that culling them could help keep us healthier longer. And that's really, the, that's really our goal. Not many of us want to live to 120 and feel like we're 120. But the concept of feeling vigorous and being productive in our later years is really what we're hoping to achieve. And the concept of living well and living longer are not mutually exclusive. In fact, if you look at the cost of health care, the cost of health care in the last two years of life of those who live until they're 100 is one-third of the cost of the health care 
in the last two years of life for those living into their 70s. So we think again that by understanding the fundamental mechanisms of aging and ridding the body of those processes, we can have profound effects on health span and lifespan. So in sum, um, we, we really think that uh, we've discovered a very fundamental process of aging. We also believe that new ways and new strategies to remove these cells from the body, this is where a lot of our work is now, is trying to identify ways we can target these cells with different drugs and devices. By removing them, we think we can have a profound effect on delaying the onset of age-related diseases. Right now, we have a number of projects going on looking at this, proce this process of cellular senescence in multiple diseases, and those include atherosclerosis, diabetes, cancer, and others. And in, in the end, we might, might want to think that the fountain of youth is not such a, a myth or a fantasy, but it may be closer than we think. And I really believe in the next five years, we'll, we'll, we'll have uh, a good idea if this is um, a true path forward. Thank you very much for your attention.